Hey Chris, what video should I do this week? I don't know. What ideas do you have? What about how to take photos of pigeons? No. What about how to take photos of stuffed animals? No. How to take naked photos of yourself and post them on the internet and make a lot of money off them? No. How to shoot dogs? No. How to take pictures of your uncle while he's sleeping? No. What about how to take photos without a camera? I, I don't even know how you would do that. That just sounds like it's already a failure. Oh. Well, you know what, Chris? I'm getting really tired of your negativity. That could work. So people have been asking me, hey Lizzie, what are your tips for composing a photo and what are your tips for using negative space? Well, I'm gonna tell you how to compose a photo using negative space. So I hope that, you know, crosses off two birds with one stone or, what is that saying again? <laughs> so with negative space, a lot of people make the assumption that it's just a photo with a lot of empty space in it. And you're not wrong. But what this effect ends up having is it draws your eye more towards the subject in your image. This subject is what we call positive space. So think of a tiny dot on a blank piece of paper, kind of like this. That's kind of the effect you're giving here. Um, you can't help but look at the dot on the page, right? So I absolutely love shooting with negative space. And what I find that this effect has on my photos is it sort of just leaves room for the emotion in the photo to shine through, basically because there's nothing else there to uh, distract you, I guess. It's uncluttered, it's super simple, it's clean, it's refined. It's a very unique way of framing your photos at the same time. You're not just filling up your frame with the subject. You're leaving room for maybe it's an interesting room you're in, or maybe um, you're outdoors and it's a beautiful landscape, or you're framing between two pillars and it's just really drawing your eye to your subject. Um, it can really make your photos stand out, which I love. You'll also notice that a lot of people say, oh, there's too much empty space. Like, why did you put the person so low in the frame? Or why are they all the way on the right side of the frame? A lot of times that person is right. That's not necessarily how you should be shooting all the time, but it's a really simple way to differentiate your photos, to get creative with your framing, to really make your photos stand out, and just kind of go back to basics a little bit. You don't have to overcomplicate it. Sometimes simple is better. The first step in how to take a negative space photo is to figure out what your subject is because you're kind of working backwards from that point. My second tip is one that's similar to a tip I gave in my Three Big Mistakes video, but basically it's pay attention to the space that you're in. If you're super up close and personal with your model, you're not gonna get the full effect of wherever you are. So if you're in a really great hall, showcase the ceiling. Uh, if you're in a really interesting, vast landscape, then step back and show off the landscape. Um, if you have someone who's standing in front of a body of water, for example, maybe put your subject in the lower corner and show that body of water in the rest of your frame. So really think about what location you're in and if there's an opportunity to take that negative space photo. My third tip is to frame forwards or frame back. So there's definitely a better name for this, but that's what I call it. Basically framing forward is if your subjects turn to the side, for example, if you leave some lead room this way in your frame, that's framing forward. If you leave some empty space behind them, that's framing back. So you'll notice if you take a, a photo of this at home, for example, if you want to try it out, the photo in which you're framing forward, you get the feeling that your subject is a bit more optimistic, it's more um, hopeful, more inspirational, like they're looking towards something. And if you're framing back, it sort of gives off a more somber vibe, more lonely, I guess you could say as well. And that's even if your model is making a similar facial expression in both photos. So where do you start when you're taking these negative space photos? Don't think too hard about these tips. 
I would say just start leaving some empty space in your photos and see what happens. Go back to your computer, check them out and see if there's anything you could have done differently. And I think practicing this will really help. The next time you're on a shoot and you're up close and personal with your model, taking a bunch of portraits and you're starting to run out of ideas, and then maybe you'll start to think, hmm, negative space would work really well in this photo where I am right now. Maybe I will try that once or twice. And then you have a photo that's completely different than someone else's in that location. A great way to check if your negative space photo was successful is take it and make it black and white. And once you make it black and white, you'll be able to tell if your subject stands out. So like I said before, just try shit. And that includes different ways of framing. You can never go wrong with trying something new. And a lot of times trying something new is what's gonna make your photo stand out among some other ones. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. It would mean the world to me. Um, and I'll see you guys next week. Oh, and don't forget to let me know what Hey Lizzie episode you would like me to do next. See you later.